Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Reddington India Limited Q4 FY22 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. The statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajesh Srivastava, Managing Director of Reddington India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, good morning and a warm welcome to everyone on this call of uh, uh, Reddington's earning call for Q4 and the year gone by. Uh, very happy to be with all of you today morning. Uh, and we are pleased to report another strong quarter of sales and operating margin growth. Um, Renton achieved record revenue and operating margin for the year as are continued investments in, in technology capabilities, partner relationships, and our comprehensive breadth of offerings begins to pay off. Growing demand for supply chain orchestration is driving strong financial performance across our global businesses. Looking ahead to this quarter, we continue to anticipate a reasonable demand environment and expect to sustain strong revenue and margins from our recently implemented operating improvements amid the backdrop of geopolitical uncertainty, which we all know is playing out in the world. But let me give you uh, a color on the numbers. Our revenue for the quarter stands at 17,324 crores, which is a 12% growth year on year and 13% in terms of uh, absolutely on gross, uh, gross accounting basis. EBITDA growth has been 14%, which is higher than uh, revenue, and that has been 15% growth, uh, which is again higher than EBITDA and revenue both. So, so, so that's on a consolidated basis for all the geographies we operate in. India grew 22% in revenue, 8% uh, EBITDA, and that of 8% 8 whereas overseas saw revenue growth of 4%, but very strong EBITDA growth of 18%, and a flat of 20%. So those are the numbers. Uh, uh, for the quarter gone by, uh, and 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 for the year, um, we said uh, we we crossed a revenue of 62,732 crores, which is 12% uh, growth on gross accounting basis, and net is 10%. Very strong EBITDA growth for the year at 31%, and that growing 69% for the year. So I think both in terms of quarter and year, we've had a very very robust uh, performance. Let me give you a bit of a color on as to what's going on uh, in the world from from the point of technology and from the geos and regions that we operate in uh, to give you a sense of story behind the numbers. Uh, we know that the world markets and world businesses uh, and individuals are seeing a very strong uh, technology adoption. We operate in India, in Middle East, in Africa, in Turkey, uh, pretty much across uh, 37, 38 odd countries. And at one level, you will find that most of these economies uh, for the last couple of quarters have been pretty positive. The prognosis, which is the future version for these economy growth, is also positive. And we can talk about a bit in, in terms of uh, near-term challenges, but largely the, the GDP growth forecast for the year looks like quite positive for, for each of these countries. And all of these countries are going through a very strong technology adoption. We have seen infra infrastructure push by governments in our region. Uh, India, Middle East, Africa, Turkey, everywhere, pretty much all, all locations. Organizations have rolled out years of technology projects into a few months, and that really has been a serious acceleration of digital transformation or digital adoption that we've seen. And this happens to be pretty much across uh, all, the, all the sectors of, uh, of the economy, manufacturing, retail, education, uh, government policy support for all these technology products, projects, learn from home, work from home, uh, acceleration of digital economy. So pretty much every single business is trying to leverage technology as the next lever of growth as also 
education, work from home and learn from home continue to, uh, to accelerate. Now we know that there will be a, a shift in this as we go forward, but for the moment it's been a very strong driver. All of this growth you would find that is investment in consumption led so far. Uh, com companies, organizations and governments have been making a huge amount of investments in each of these infrastructure push just to make sure that they can modernize, they can automate themselves. So the investment in consumption led uh, scenario is playing out to our advantage. The technology that is consuming uh, is in the domain of, uh, of cloud, subscription, uh, and then base level foundational applications like SAP and CRM, customer experience, a uh, very strong focus on sales automation and customer analytics. Whatever companies can do to assess and reach out to their customers in a more productive manner is something which is finding immense favor as we speak right now. And then there is always new technology of the nature of artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, internet of things, IoT is getting more and more popular as we speak. Uh, 5G based applications, you will find that the world going forward is going to be a lot more video and voice based and we are trying to uh, ride all of this. And then there is one very interesting thing which is happening is on the space of, very small for us yet, but very interesting space of 3D uh, where you can pretty much manufacture in an additive manner uh, a variety of products uh, that, that customers and consumers can consume and it is really a democratization of manufacturing as well. Uh, those are the things that are happening from a technology perspective, but we, have, we as a company are also cognizant and conscious of the fact that there is a buying behavior shift in the market. What people buy, how they buy and who they buy from is completely shifting and shifting at a very fast clip. So uh, there is a shift from product to services. So instead of buying everything in a very CapEx dominated way, people are shifting to as a service model. That's one big shift. Uh, the other thing is from an own to a subscription model. So instead of trying to own everything, and, and, and be, uh, be paying for it upfront, people are trying to move towards the most subscription oriented model, which means you buy and consume when you want to and really don't have to be started with an OPEX cost forever in your life. So I think those are the things which buying behavior shift is taking place. Uh, we are also seeing very strong shifts in business model. Uh, in, in traditionally, we've always been accustomed to used to a very brick and mortar um, method of buying and selling by people but that brick and mortar is shifting towards a much more online dominated world and pretty much everything in between. So we are entering into a world which is a true omni-channel where the customer journeys are discontinuous and anybody who can predict or manage the customer journeys in this discontinuous world will be an absolute clear winner. So I think there are business model shifts in the marketplace, uh, omni-channel, everything as a service, and those are the elements that we are very conscious of, cognizant of, and we will do everything as possible, as possible uh, to make sure that we can ride, ride this wave. With this initial commentary, let me stop over here and open it up for your comments and your observations, questions, uh, and we will be more than happy to take everything on. Uh, I can also talk to you a bit about our strategy as we go forward, but for the moment, let me open it up, open it up for your interaction. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Yeah, and I just want to let you know, I also got my chief, uh, global chief financial officer, SP Christian, on the call with me, and Deepika, our finance leader and, and, and investor analyst. Hi, good morning. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Chetan Shah from Abacus Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and uh, congratulations to entire team for a, such a fabulous uh, number and keep surprising us in terms of uh, not just the business, but also in terms of the way you are managing your working capital. Uh, I have a two very specific questions. One in continuation of your opening remarks, sir, where you, where you mentioned that we are, uh, we are now going for, from a, for a change in the way 
customer buys the product and the and the entire business model and the market sizing is getting changed so could you could you just little bit elaborate in terms of how does this going to play out uh, from our mix of uh, business because we'll be more focused on b2b or uh, within the b2b the large client concentrated client they not only expect from us uh, just the product but also the continuation of uh, support of the product one is that question and sir second i wanted to understand uh, how is the pro connect uh, as a business progressing we are seeing a, a steady state growth in the numbers and also the margin if you can give us some flavor of uh, of that business where we are and what is our big picture look like three year down the line these are the two very specific question and once again congratulation and all the best for your uh, for your future sir uh ketan thanks so much yaar look both your questions are very very interesting and let me give you and very very close to what we doing right now so let me give you a sense of what's happening in the customer buying behavior and you mentioned clearly i mean the buying behavior is shifting like i said we used to all go and buy from shops and retailers and malls or wherever we used to but very uh, and now the pandemic and even even before pandemic it started the model started to pivot towards a convenience and customer choice model you get the convenience of ordering from anywhere and everywhere and you get the huge amount of choice when you sit behind and and then just go and and go to a, a site or a website or 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 the options that are available on that site for you buying so i think those are the two drivers convenience and customer choice are the drivers of change in business model we see this coming very strongly it happened in our business a lot of our products have started to go online um, and people are shifting to buying from walk and and so today what you do is you walk into a shop you go to a retail outlet you check out the products then suddenly you go to a website and do um, do a research online so check online and and research offline or vice versa are the game and and so this is a discontinuous customer journey there is no one customer which just follows one single pattern customers follow multiple routes and multiple patterns and we got to be cognizant now this is a very huge analytics and very huge customer track and trace uh, uh, technology driven architecture that you need to create to be able to maximize this and this is exactly what we do in both in our b2b world where customers can come and take a look at the products that we have uh, on site and they can take a look at the choices that have got available from various brands and various vendors and they can make a right choice and we will also give them advisory services on what is absolutely right for the business so that's a huge shift in the manner in which we are trying to fulfill the basic customer requirement of choice and convenience so that's what we are trying to do uh, on on the and then whether you buy online or offline products get supported because support warranty long term a uh, commitment to maintain the product and absolutely keep it working in the way it was designed to work these are product attributes of of app all brands so we will uh, that doesn't get compromised at all so continuation of support for every consumer and customer is absolutely an experience that we cannot and can never no brand can ever compromise on so those are the things that are happening in the online and the omni channel sort of a world to your point about proconet very interesting story on proconet we've had such a satisfying year on proconet you know we were, we used to be always very Uh, you know the procret always used to come up as as a story which was uh, a little bit up and down a bit last year we took a call that we will do every single thing possible in procret business to make sure the business stabilizes before we launch ourselves for an aggressive growth and that is exactly the way it played out procret turned around with a revenue growth of 9% in last year it did an ebitda of 17% growth and a pat of 46% growth and these are the things that we put fundamentals in place in proconet business whether it is the right right sizing of the customers going after the right verticals in our in our customer uh, going after making sure that we have the right technology in place for for fulfilling our logistics supply chain uh, business or transportation and warehousing uh, making sure that we have the right sort of operational capability in place so there's a lot of work which has gone in in the proconet business to make sure that the business starts to look fundamentally very sound and secure and that is precisely what what you are seeing in results now so our strategy of consolidating getting foundationally strong from a capability perspective has played out very well uh thank you so much sir just uh, one small question about the cloud business uh, if you can give us something about that uh, that's it from my side uh, thank you so much 
Okay. Uh, so look, I, I don't know what you mean by when you say you, I can give you something about cloud. No. So I, my, I, cloud. I just wanted to understand that how is the traction happening in 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 that specific vertical of the, is there something which we started a couple of years back we have a very big plan yes. for next 5 years so in in the journey where are we are we on track are we ahead of track and because because now now seeing other other vertical i i want to believe that we are ahead of curve in that side of the business also so just just trying to get a sense of that yeah yeah no i think it's a great question and i think you are you are absolutely bang on when you say that Uh, when you compare it with the rest of the business, how does cloud stack up? And it stacks up extremely well, Jason. It stacks so well because our growth in cloud in last year, uh, and cloud is a combination of products and services. We are small in services. That is a muscle that we'll build up. But overall, product and services combination of cloud has grown 41% for us last year. So uh, it's uh, in in FI 22, it's grown 41%. Which is much faster than my overall business. My overall business has gone 10%, but over for the year, but cloud has gone 41%. Now it rides on the back of of exactly what I told you about the changing business models in the market, the way customers and consumers are buying everything as a service and as a subscription model. So they don't have to get saddled with a investment which is not paying off for the long run. They can make quick adjustments to their operating model, to their cost structures. and still get the best in technology what the best in technology has to offer so our cloud story is coming around very nicely very quickly we partner with all the hyperscalers which is amazon microsoft and google and so we got some very sound partnerships in place these are the three biggest players in the world and we are fortunate to be aligning with them to make sure that our cloud story continues to become stronger and stronger as we go forward and just to complement to what rajesh said uh, we have also invested in a very a uh, very good cloud platform which will enable uh, no touch or a less touch level of transaction and that's also going to help us in terms of scaling the business with an optimized cost uh thank you so much sir i'll come back in the queue thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of dhawal shah from swan investments please go ahead yeah hi good morning to the team and uh, great set of numbers in this challenging times uh so uh, i have questions uh, on our uh, this comparing uh, so we did around 17300 crore top line and if i were to just compare this with the december quarter or december 20 quarter or the q3 21 we were roughly at the same uh, number like 17000 approx now uh, but if we look at the uh, the operating expenses uh at that time we were at around 260 crores and now we are at 330 crores so uh which element of this operating expenses has you know uh, seen a big improve uh, uh, a big increase you know uh, you know which is leading from 260 to 332 and secondly uh, our employee cost over the last couple of quarters is seeing a lot of up and down in terms of the absolute number so uh, any uh, uh, trend or you know how should we uh, understand that uh, you know how does this employee cost move uh, you know with the, with with the top line like in december 20 quarter same was 250 crore now is it 238 crore so yeah these are my two broad questions okay um, let me let me give you a color on on the expenses that we are doing and what we are doing in expenses and i think you will relate this to what i said earlier about investments in technology and people and how the business is moving uh, towards everything as a service and a customer choice model when you do all these things we got to make sure that we pivot our business from a brick and mortar offline model to a omni channel enabled model and so we have, uh, we make a huge amount of investments and we continue to make you will see our investments continue to be high uh, to convert our business to a much more Uh, responsive online model so we are setting up um, uh, an online platform which will allow our customers the choice that i just talked about in uh, a bit ago krishan okay. also mentioned to you about the choice in the cloud platform we have invested in a very strong cloud platform where any customer or any partner can come and configure the product solutions and services they want to buy and procure and then just provision for themselves it's such a easy self service sort of a model Uh, that we have launched now and that's again a huge investment we will continue to make sure we invest in that space 
uh, to increase our technology capability uh, to reach out to our customers and partners in a very meaningful way. And then when you pivot towards in the cloud area, when you pivot from a product to a much more product and services combination, you would find that services is a very people dominated business. It is a highly capability oriented, people dominated business. You need to acquire the best of capabilities in the market to make sure that you can serve your customers much more cleanly, much more closely, and in a much more integrated, holistic fashion. That's what we're doing. That's the reason our OPEX cost on people, employee cost has gone up. Our OPEX has gone up just because we've, been, we've invested a lot of money in the cloud technology and the e-commerce technology platform. Plus, we are also investing a lot in our own internal tech capabilities so that we can get far more streamlined, far more optimized as we go forward. This is the best time to make the investments because if you make the investments now, you really can get the best of the investments that you make and the relations that we have uh, for future continued robust growth in the future. So we are, in a way, in a sense, we are future-proofing ourselves. This time is being utilized by us to make sure that we future-proof ourselves in a very robust manner uh, and, and continue to ride the growth curve forever. And this is a shift. We, we acknowledge, we recognize a shift in the marketplace and fortunate that we caught it at the best time and we are dialing up on, on those shifts. Thank you. Oh, just, just there was one more point to your question. Uh, just, just on the first point with respect to the comparison to QP of last financial year, see, you would have seen in the last couple of years, the Q3 uh, has, has always been on the on the higher higher uh, end, mainly because of certain new launches that are being done in the mobility space to correspond to the festive season. So there will be some spike in revenue that time, which will uh, which will enable better profitability. Even in the current year, if you see for for Q3, uh, the the EBITDA was much uh, uh, thing much higher as well as the PAT. So that's very specific to Q3. But having said that, on the expenses, Rajiv very clearly mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, we are making some investments for the future that will enable some increase in cost, but we are very positive in terms of that getting recovered uh, uh, in, the, in the form of higher margins in future. Yeah. I think the revenue is just seasonality thing. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Krish Mehta from Anam Holdings. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations on a great set of numbers, and thank you for taking my question. I just have I'm two sorry questions. to interrupt, Mr. Mehta. Can you please speak a little louder? Hi, uh, am I clear? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. I just had two questions. One was on the cloud revenue for Q4 and the subscription revenue within cloud for Q4. Yeah. Look, all of our cloud revenue is actually subscription revenue only. It isn't a, so our, our cloud revenue for Q4 is 436 crores, which is a 49% growth year on year. And all of it is subscription. That's how you measure cloud. No, I, I'm sorry. I meant the services part of the cloud revenue for Q4. Okay. Services is a small part. Services uh, revenue in this is... I think about 20 crores. Is, is that about 4.4%? Yeah, about 4.4%. Okay, and just if I could follow up on that, how do you see the services scaling up as we go forward in this financial year? Oh yeah, look, uh, services is the one which is uh, which is meant to scale up. Uh, that's where I said we are making a ton of our investments and in employees is all around services. Uh, cloud will scale up, and so would services. Services always start small, and I'm so pleased. I can't even tell you how pleased I am right now that in um, in a time, in a short time, we have gone to a services revenue of almost about four and a half percent of our overall cloud business, which is which which is a very very healthy trajectory. Uh, what it is doing to us is many things. Okay, it's not just about and don't don't just uh, I, I don't want to get weighted just on the size of the revenue. What it is doing to us is it is opening us up to many, many different kinds of very deep-rooted strategic partnerships. We are getting exposed to a lot more customers. We are getting exposed to a lot more partners whom we partner and take their services to customers. 
we are getting exposed to a lot more system integration partners who are taking us along with them to customers to make sure that we can deliver services to them. So it's far more strategic at that level. So overall, hopefully, over time, right now it's, uh, it's about 4.5%, but over time, I see our services portfolio going in the near term to be at least about 10% of our overall cloud business. Okay, thank you so much. That's very helpful. Yeah, thanks, Fish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pushkar Jain from Sequent Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I just have one short question. I just need your viewpoint on how the go-to-market strategy from Apple will impact our business. Thank you. Uh, uh, and look, Apple has got, like any other brand, like any other vendor, uh, every vendor has got their own GTM approaches and strategy where they try and dissect the market, they segment the market a lot more. Apple made a very strong change to the go-to-market model beginning of last year. Okay, and they shifted a lot of their business from partners like ours to going direct to retail, which is retail of uh, Flipkart, Amazon variety in India. They didn't make the similar change in Middle East and Africa. Uh, they made a different change in Middle East and Africa. They, they, they took away some regional distributors in Middle East and Africa. So a similar theme played out that they wanted to be closer to their customers, they wanted to be closer to their partners uh, and all of that. And look what we did. In this, despite Apple going the way they did or any other brand going the way they did, our revenues in India last year grew 19%. Okay, so we were able to mitigate totally because what is happening is when when a route to market is is made uh, made different uh, different way of addresses, there are other things which open up. And Apple has a lot of products. Apple has products of the nature of MacBook. Apple has a product of iPad. They have got lots and lots of accessories and similar so on and so forth for many other many other product categories. And all of those started to play out differently for us. So we re-engineered. I mean, just as we were talking of Apple's GTM, I think what is more relevant for you and for us is how did Reddington re-engineer its GTM to maximize the market opportunity? We re-engineered a GTM. We went uh, in a variety of different ways to a lot more countries, a lot more geography, a lot more local presence, enhancing a lot of capabilities at the ground in, in the field close to customers and close to partners where they exist to make sure that we can continue the trajectory of growth and the results have really, really been fantastic for us. They've surprised us in a way, uh, but they've been absolutely, and, and in, a, in, a, in a pleasant way, they've, they've, uh, they've surprised us. But we, we could remodel our JTM to make sure that we capitalize, uh, continue to capitalize on the growth that we deserve. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Sheet from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So uh, I have two set of uh, questions. One is on the revenue part. Uh, India business uh, effectively grew faster, you know, uh, given the high base of last year. If you can throw some light on, you know, uh, which uh, which segment, uh, whether it's IT product-driven uh, growth or it was uh, mobility-driven growth, uh, which helped us to clock such a uh, wonderful, uh, you know, revenue growth for the quarter. And second, on the international part, again in the revenue piece, uh, that uh, despite you know Brightstar's acquisition and getting uh, a full uh, quarter benefit for this quarter. Uh, the revenue was softer, uh, and the same question applies to here as well. That uh, which segment you know uh, was softer uh, related to what uh, we have been seeing in the past? Uh, if you can provide color on that. And second part of the question is on the working capital. If I look at the trajectory, you know, from last year to this year, our uh, uh, receivable days and inventory kind of inching back to the normal levels. Well, uh, and the benefit which we are getting uh, is driven by purely driven by the tables being uh, favorable to us. So, if, and given that, you know, there, there is a supply issue, given that we are, uh, uh, you know, extracting a slightly better gross margin from uh, from the market, uh, the payable being, uh, you know, favorable to us uh, looks uh, very, you know, uh, uh, I, try, I, I need to try to understand this piece when when you are, your supply is tight, your margins are better in the market, and yet you get a better credit terms from your vendor. So if you can throw more color on that piece, uh, uh, that that's all for mine. Thanks. 
yeah yeah okay let me okay you got uh, chintan you got ask many 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 question not just two or three because each one of them is a simple uh, you know strong question itself but let, let us try and answer each one of them i'll do a few and i'll leave to krishna and our keeper to handle handle the rest sure sure okay. nice. so so just to give you a, just to give you a sense of revenue uh, grew faster which products grew faster than the others uh, our it products and it business grew very fast it grew at 24% our services business grew fast at 12% and our mobility was a decline last year it was a negative 11% okay uh, and let me give you why mobility was a decline and why and, and within within the it products which grew mobility was a decline because last year in three out of the four quarters there has been a considerable pressure on supply you know the supply chain in the world has been disrupted there are a lot of commodity shortages because of which uh lots of brands have been struggling with supplies apple has struggled with supplies you know last quarter they were 8 billion short on supplies samsung struggled on supplies sanseon oppo vivo in different in different geographies you got different mobility brands and all mobility brands last year went through a huge supply constraint i'm hoping they'll come out of it this year uh, and let's keep our fingers crossed but that led to a decline in the revenue of of uh, of uh, phones or smartphones or mobility business it is borne by the fact that overall global market on smartphones degrew 6% in q3 and degrew in q2 degrew 6% in q3 and degrew 9% in q4 so for the last three quarters global uh, smartphone market global mobility market has been shrinking and is all because of supply led constraints so we uh, we had a drop in our uh, mobility revenue not uh, not surprisingly and absolutely aligned with most what we are seeing in the market our it business saw very very strong growth uh, our it business our enterprise grew faster than our consumer access product device so enterprise it grew 30% last year on the back of the way you are seeing change in the cloud buying behavior the change in the fact that enterprises are trying to run really really large and big complex projects as you go forward so enterprise it has grown extremely well uh, and and that is uh, that's been a very very good story whereas the consumer it has grown 21% for the full year again a strong growth but the heartening factor over here and, and this is something which really really pleases me is the fact that we outstripped the market by a factor you know in india for instance in q4 the pc market grew 31% reddington grew 46% PC market in Middle East and Africa grew 8% Q4. We grew 21%. I mean, this two and a half x the market. So I think our our engines, the way I talked to talked to the earlier question on GTM, how we re-engineered our GTM, that is I think playing to our advantage of making sure that we get the growth. So I think our revenue growth uh, faster, and this is the how the split of uh, whole revenue growth looks like. Uh, to talk to you about the international business, and this is the Brightstar acquisition. Despite the Brightstar acquisition, how the revenue has stayed uh, pretty much. Uh, uh flat or the overall overseas revenue actually overseas revenue has grown 5% in 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 uh, in gross uh, gross accounting terms it's grown 5% despite bright star now now you have to understand two things happened there was uh, we grew much faster in the market like i said but the overall market came down so holding on so our our job in that place was how do you continue to grow or stable stability in a stable or a degrowing market and that's exactly what we did So we feel good about the fact that we were able to outstrip the market by such a factor and maintain a growth trajectory. Uh, and Brightstar added and helped to it, uh, but other things that could have probably helped with would, if we had the right level of supplies of mobility and all, I think we would have been a much, much, much faster growing uh, business. But it just we outstrip the market, which is a great, great story from our perspective. Let me hand it over to Krishnan to ha- to answer the questions on. receivables favorable ap supply uh, you know supply issues and sure, sure. thanks sajee sure sure uh, yeah <laughs> we have we have maintained our working capital and you are absolutely right in terms of your uh, your analysis that the dso has gone up dio has gone up and the increase in dpo is what has contributed to maintaining working capital perfectly right the reason why uh, the payable days have have gone up uh, is also to do with mix of products as rajiv just explained our it uh, it division has done very well within that enterprise has done even more better and these uh, were the cases where the the uh, i mean the credit days from the vendors are significantly high that has enabled okay. us to increase our payable days 
having said that there is a small portion which may be due to uh, the supply uh, supply model that we have had towards the end of the quarter we did see a lot of supplies happening towards the end of the quarter which has enabled us to liquidate those inventory otherwise a significant part of it is because of the mix and the better negotiation that our business team has done with the vendor okay but any any credit terms being uh, turned favorable apart from you know uh, what you mentioned the mix driven uh, mix driven effect on the bpos sorry you are you are you are no 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 i, I don't think there is a real revision or reworking on the credit terms it's okay. just that okay. on a on a deal by deal basis you rework the credit terms the deal right. deal business can be dramatically mm -hmm. different and and since there is such a strong focus on enterprise which is deal oriented so you see a better favorable ap uh, in that sense yeah. see in sure, sure. in those business verticals the credit days that we offer to the customer is also higher and accordingly the credit days that we get from the vendors are also higher sure sure uh, got it i'll jump back in queue uh, for more questions thank you thank you for the answer thank you the next question is from the line of chirag sagavat from hdfc please go ahead Uh, good morning and congratulations for a great year and for a great quarter as well. I had uh, two questions. One was in terms of Apple, if you could highlight the performance for this quarter, and because of the change in GTM, what kind of performance could Apple deliver next year? Also considering the supply constraints in the system. So that was my first question. And the second was in terms of profitability. I think the company has done a remarkable job. So would like to understand what you think is sustainable. overall consolidated profitability those are my two questions thank you okay um let me give you a sense on on both of them yeah okay uh, clearly apple uh, has been a, a great story you know apple grew very very fast in last quarter uh, they grew 33% growing 33% at a revenue turnover of some 290 billion which took them to 366 billion for the year last year was fantastic but the last quarter was a Uh, they had uh, they had a slower growth uh, just because uh, that it wasn't a launch quarter. The previous quarter was a launch quarter, and and Christian mentioned about that. We also we saw uh, a, a growth in our like I I said our our overall mobility business came down. Um, so Apple also came down for us just because there were supply shortage situations uh, in the quarter. Our contribution of Apple to overall revenues has is a little down from from the earlier times. but we do see a very strong uh going forward because there will be new launches coming up in the next two quarters uh we see the supply situation and and today was yesterday i was i was going through the news yesterday and very good uh, announcement apple said that they would consider to increase the production volumes from the factory in india you guys know that they do a manufacturing through winston in india bangalore and that could be a very good story if it is if they, if they dial up the volumes increase the manufacturing volumes from the indian factory i think we will all be benefited immensely and that can lead to a very strong uh, positive uh, you know supply chain gap being mitigated completely uh, if that were to happen in a, in a hurry so i think apple is in a very very good space for us um, it continues to be our largest brand and continues to be a very positive story as we are as we are thinking about uh, apple last year now and for the next year as well so we will continue to do everything right we are obviously making sure that our rest of the brands and our rest of the business portfolio starts to look better and healthier all the time that's the reason i mentioned to you about enterprise growth and the cloud growth and all of that but it's it all all those portfolios are in a very very good space from a profitability uh, perspective the question that will the profitability of the last year continue for this year or not i think look i think that's a question that we will uncover as we go forward and i don't want to sound uh, random on this because the world today is really in an uncertain space i mean a lot of a uh, lot of uh, elements in the world are in an uncertain space right now and we got to be thoughtful that we have we have undergone and undertaken and weathered in a very positive way a lot of storms we continue to do that and we will be very watchful uh, to make sure that our trajectory of uh, profitability and our trajectory of revenue growth continues there are headwinds clearly in business uh, there are headwinds of the nature of inflation of the nature of commodity prices of the nature of energy costs a whole bunch of stuff which is 
creating headwinds. And they are also tailwinds. I mean, uh, fuel prices going up actually leads to a very good story from a Middle East uh, perspective. A lot of countries are, are driven by that. Uh, so I think we are in a good space right now uh, between uh, netting it out all the geopolitical factors for ourselves, uh, the shortage situation which can hold up our gross margin extremely well. We will be extremely watchful and cautious and we'll watch every single day, every single moment because we operate in a environment today which is highly dynamic and highly volatile and we got to make sure that we adjust and we adjust our business priorities and our operating operations uh, on a on an absolutely real time dynamic basis. So we feel good about where we are right now. We feel good the fact that uh, in the in the near term, in the interim, the gross margin should hold up, and we'll continue to watch the space. As Chirag, I'm sure you would, uh, as SGFC, you would, <laughs> SGFC must be watching uh, what's going on in the financial uh, markets around the world and in India. So I'm sure all of us will be together in this. But I feel good about where we are right now that everything should hold up. And just a quick follow-up, uh, what would have been the impact of the change in GTM for Apple for last year in terms of lost revenue? Uh, we would have lost about 3,500, 3, 3.2, 3,000, yeah. And that impact is just in the second half, or would you have seen that in the first half as well? It started in Q3. It started in Q2, actually. First so half is both. First half Q1, and then Q3 and Q4. Sure. So the loss in revenue is around 3,500 crores. Yeah, 3,200 or something like that. But we more than made up. Like I said, despite that, we grew. India grew 19%. Yeah. Sure. So, so we could we could make up much more than that. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit from Middleware Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on uh, the 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 supply chain issues which we have been seeing in the mobility side of business, right? So you said that you know we have been seeing this degrowth in the last three quarters because of the supply chain. So wanted to understand you know for how more how many quarters more you know you expect this situation to continue? Uh, what are you seeing on the ground at at the current uh, level? And the second question of working capital is a basic one uh, where we have the working capital of around 13 to 14 days, right? And it is driven by the increase in payable days. So can uh, because I think we had mentioned the previous earnings call that you know it would come down to around normalized level of 28 to 30 days. So it will be again this payable days will come down from 63 to 47, 48 days. Uh, so the credit terms will get revised with the vendors from the IT segment as well. Uh, so those are my two questions. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to uh, Christian. Do you want to take the second question first, and I'll take the short sure. quickly. See, uh, uh, you are right. We have been saying that there will be normalization, so that's that's very clearly in place. As the situation becomes normalized in the market, the working capital will get normalized. Which component of that will get normalized? We think all the three will get impacted, and in our view, there will be, uh, 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 I mean, a, a good increase in the in the inventory days and the AR days, which has been highly favorable for us in the last few quarters. So whenever this normalization happens, you will see the change across, resulting in increase in working capital. Yeah. And more to a question about the supply chain issues on mobility and how long will they continue. I'm hoping they will end very soon. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this quarter looks a little better than the previous quarter from a supply chain fixing perspective. Some locations in China, some factories in China continue to be under COVID determined lockdown. So those are uh, long-term implications that the world will continue to see. Uh, but despite that, I think uh, this quarter Q1, we have seen Q1 financial, we have seen a better or little improvement in supplies. I'm hoping it continues. And this is not only mobility. I mean, this also to do with because uh, the co the components that go into the manufacture of a mobile 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 phone are similar to the components that go into the manufacture of a lot of other uh, technology or intelligent equipment like PC and chips and IoT and all of that, okay? Uh, so the, uh, and my discussions with the global leaders of companies like Lenovo and Dell and HP suggest that uh, this shortage should get, start to become a lot more easier by Q3 of this year. So it's from October onwards, you'll see a much more eased out, a much more sort of relatively freer flowing supplies, uh, but we'll have to watch and wait and watch because which way the war will sort of start to play out from that perspective, we'll have to be very cautious. But as we speak, I think it's the phone supplies become a little better than last quarter. 
Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Dixit from RJF Partners. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, give us a sense of the product concentration in your sales, um, as in uh, which are the top brands and what uh, what's their share of the revenues? Are you seeing the top top brands? Is it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, break up of your sales by brands. Just some, yeah. some clear yeah. sense of it. Yeah. Look, uh, our product concentration mirrors pretty much uh, the global brand or the global play out. Um, and we've got very strong, uh, very strong partnerships with 240, but only a handful of them obviously do much better or are, co are contributing to the higher part of the revenue. So Apple is a big contributor to our revenue. So is HP, uh, then Dell, Dell EMC, the whole portfolio of Dell EMC. Then there is Lenovo, uh, and then there is Samsung. So these are the five brands which play out the maximum for us. We don't do Samsung in India. We do Samsung in Middle East and Africa, uh, and we do Dell across some locations, not all. Again, HP also in some locations, not all. Same with Apple, but that's the way the concentration looks like. Apple, HP. Dell, Lenovo, Samsung become our top five uh, brands, and this this is uh, similar to you would find this similar to the, the way the IT industry product led revenues are, and so we mirror mirror a lot of the world. Fair enough. Uh, my my actual question was more about the risk of uh, you know let's say Apple decided a different GTM strategy, and if uh, if uh, I mean I I guess uh, managing risk is one of your one of one of your key concerns probably now as these brands evolve. So I just wanted a sense from that first. Yeah, look, that risk is forever there. I mean, this is a risk of not only Apple, it's a risk of larger distribution business that you can get disintermediated at any point in time. And all good companies, you would find that they would have to mitigate the risk of disintermediation, not only Apple, but it can be anything. A model change, for instance, when the world went from offline to online, that was the risk of disintermediation to right there. When companies like Apple decide to go in that final, or HP decides to go, so look, we will do geography-based distribution. It's a risk to us. But I think all, like all good companies, Rainton also has a very good way of trying to understand the risk, read them into the future, and then apply your own um, uh, correct, uh, mitigation um, approaches to, to minimize the risk and actually grow. And you saw that happen last year. Apple took away, uh, you know, the, the change in the business model had an impact on us to the extent of that, that much revenue. Uh, and everything for us still turned out to be at 19% uh, 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 growth. So I think we have to be mindful. And these are, these are, these are regular business, uh, business cycles that keep happening. Sometimes a new product comes and disrupts you. Sometimes a new business model disrupts you. Sometimes a change in approach of some vendors will disrupt you. Uh, that, is, that is normal business. I, I'm, not, I'm never overly concerned about those. They're all normal business happenings. They happen all the time. And as good companies, we've got to be mindful of how we try to deal with it and make sure that we uh, continue to grow in a market which is so favorable and so potential right now. Just to supplement yeah, what Rajiv says, that's the advantage of being in multiple markets and with multiple brands. And some of these uh, GTM changes, strategy changes by vendor will also be positive for us. That's why you are able to see a very consistent growth uh, across, across various markets. That's extremely hard. Can I just one last thing? These five brands, would you say that they were about 80%, 70%, 60%? Well, how much of your revenues would these five brands be? Just ballpark number, just to get a sense of oh, things. Less than, less than two-thirds, less than two-thirds. Five brands will be less than two-thirds. Well, thanks. That's great. That's, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronak Vora from Home Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. So, two things. Uh, I want to understand, uh, you know, with Apple's change in GTM, what, were, what was our reply or our re-engineered GTM strategy to kind of elaborate? Hey, uh, fairly straight. I mean, look, I, I think we are, we, are, we are giving too much of credit to Apple's GTM strategy. This is not, not required because I think uh, uh, every brand will do. Uh, every company does what they have to do for their for their right right way of being. We we re-engineer GTM all the time. I mean, how and, and why do you re-engineer GTM, Ronald? The the because 
the manner like i said the manner in which products are being bought and the manner in which products are being sold today and consumed is changing the buy- buying behavior is changing so there is a bunch of customers who are trying to go direct and online i think we have a legitimate right to go and say look how do we fulfill that requirement of customer choice if there is a shift in the market towards the most service dominated model we have a legitimate right to make say how do we continue to provide service to our customers in a model which is shifting from capital expense to operating expense driven model so i think it's it's just just that just that we have to change our model all the time we do it all the time to make sure that and, and in this specific case you will shift us and i'm just giving you a, giving a generic answer uh, it, it, you will shift your focus from one particular so assuming there is a there is a there is a, um, a a one route assuming flipkart is doing something different I, I, we have no no reason or concern to 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 really take them on we have to figure out what we do to address that requirement and so we figure out a way of trying to go more to customers to expand our geographies to make sure we are expanding to our partners the typical things that our distribution engine has to do the whole supply chain efficiency getting closer to customers and partners bringing more and more value adds and we've done a ton of them and that's the reason you are seeing that nothing impacted us it actually helped us uh, and everybody grew the brand which went a change in the and it's not all, not only apple they never had a change in this model last year okay they also went to retail directly or to to online directly so did acer uh, so and and so on and so forth many many brands have that and 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 the collective outcome of all this is that we re, 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 we we reinvented ourselves and grew 19% last year that's something which is and i think it's a, it's a healthy business thing because it allows you enables you to be sharper about your approaches it allows you to be focused on yourself and make sure you are doing all the right things to provide customers the choice they deserve provide customers the range of services they need and be close to them and continue to grow that really is a is a whole net of this okay and uh, secondly i had this question on uh, cloud services you said that we have started with all these hyperscalers so what kind of services do we provide to them uh, so what kind of uh, you know benefits do we have with them uh, to our clients and what is the exact business that we do with this cloud look i obviously can't share with you the kind of benefits they have with us and we have with them that is not okay. uh, that is not a, that is not appropriate i can't share that but i can let you know that we have a, these guys have all all of them have cloud products like microsoft has got cloud csp office 365 azure services amazon has got amazon web services and packages which can be rolled out to any customer any smb any large enterprise any customer any individual for that matter i'm sure you use office 365 on the web like i do uh, you buy office 365 for 6499 rupees six people get enabled because of that one procurement buy and this is a wonderful model uh, and that's what that's what is happening so there are a whole set of products that you sell as cloud enabled products because there are subscription services and second is for mid to large enterprises there are other range of services that need to be done and there are many services there are services of nature of uh, of transition services infrastructure services migration services platform as a service implementation whole range of uh, analytics so i think there is a there the whole model of cloud is so sort of potential and so uh, so dynamic and so uh, you know, smart it's just because it provides customer choice it provides customer ease and it provides customer the agility to deploy models so i think we got a whole range of services and a range of products from these hyperscalers to sell to our to our customers okay thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anuj Jain from Value Quest Capital. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. I have one question. Uh, is there details on uh, Turkey operations in terms of growth profitability for the entire year and expectations going forward? Sorry to interrupt can... you, Mr. Jain, but your voice is breaking, sir. Can you please check? Uh, hello. Am I audible now? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. so my question is with regards to turkey operations if we can provide uh, more details regarding growth and profitability for the full year and our expectations going forward considering uh, the mac- macro in turkey okay look turkey has been a very uh, very good operation for us uh, and we operate in turkey under two we have a direct uh, we have a direct uh, operations in turkey which is 
rent in Turkey, and then we have a Turkey operation, which is through our a company which uh, we acquired in Turkey called Rent and uh, Arena. Okay, and and the revenue has been has been flattish in Turkey, and you understand Turkey has gone through a huge amount of uh, geopolitical economic uh, uh, considerations over the last couple of years now. Okay, the inflation in Turkey this year happens to be at around 70 percent, pretty much the highest inflation country in the world at this moment. But despite all that, our revenue in in Turkey has been doing reasonably well. We know we've been going faster than the market across pretty much all categories. Arena plays largely in the volume space, which is mobility and uh, and uh, and the access products, PC and printers, and surveillance security equipment. And rent in Turkey, which is our uh, the 100% subsidy, operates largely in the value space. So they do. Uh, cloud and other other kinds of value services. So I think in both of these spaces, we've had a very strong sort of a positioning in Turkey. Our prognosis for Turkey, which is what the import of your question looks like, we stay invested in Turkey. It's a huge market. It's a market that provides us with many many leverages. It's a it's a gateway to the West. It's a gateway of huge amount of innovation. I was surprised. I went to Turkey recently. I was surprised with the level of innovation that Turkey is. Trying to engage with on high technology, on services, on cost of service delivery. So Turkey is extremely strategic for our intern, and we will make sure that uh, they continue to grow faster in the market, which is what they've been doing over the last uh, so many years, despite a very difficult economic environment. And we will leverage Turkey for a variety of other innovations that they are capable of bringing. So, sir, in FY twenty two, did we uh, did we had losses in Turkey operations, or it was profitable? It, it's profitable. Our Turkey operations, the profitability of Turkey operations in FY twenty two has been Turkey operations grew fifteen point five percent in profit in fact last year. Uh, this year in FY twenty two or FY twenty one. So Turkey has been uh, Turkey has been obviously profitable. Okay. Okay. Understood. Thanks. Extremely quite profitable. And I really compliment my team in Turkey for able for, for the ability to manage the most volatile region of the world right now from an economic perspective. Right. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Asim Bharde from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Morning. Uh, so just wanted clarification on the GPM Apple change. So this one was specific to smartphones in India, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, then the 3500 crore loss of revenue that would be purely on the India mobility business. And uh, although you have mentioned that despite the Apple India revenue loss, you have grown India business by 19%. So I assume that is for the console India business. So just on the India mobility side, have there been any mitigating strategies put in place for the loss in Apple revenue? Look, we are we are obviously contemplating uh, what we can do. Uh, it's not necessarily a mitigation is not a brand specific mitigation. A mitigation is overall business specific mitigation. And so um, just a typical typical mitigation would be what you do with more brands, where you can provide more services, how can you reach out to more customers and consumers. What GTMs can you improve and improvise upon to reach out to more partners, more more cities, more towns, uh, all of that. So I think all of that is there. So diversification in terms of number of partners that we have, diversification or addition of number of towns and locations that we do business in, uh, diversification in number of addition of brands that we can do, or more services that we can provide, and become a more holistic country to become a more holistic provider. That's what we're trying to do. All of my answers on this, I know there have been a lot of questions on this topic. All of my question, answers have been consistent. We are trying to make sure that we do what is right from uh, expansion of our business and geo, geo and partner and all that coverage. So we reinvent our GTM to make sure we grow. So basically the loss uh, of uh, mobile, uh, Apple mobility revenue would probably be covered not just from mobility business, but from your other IT business as well. That's, that's the point, right? Yes, yes. It always happens, right? And uh, just fair to assume that uh, since the India, rather the Apple GTM issue was a Q3, Q4 phenomena last year, so fair to assume that even Q1 and Q2 of this year, the the 
there should be an impact in india mobility business regardless of supply chain issue much less much less not q2 because like i said q2 q3 q4 were impacted last year okay uh, so okay. so that why why compare will start to become positive from this year uh, just the q1 will be and we'll obviously manage that having said that i just want to say see normally for these businesses uh, uh, i mean the festive season is a is a peak period so that's something that we had seen in the previous period itself so i don't think there need to be any extra concern got it okay thanks a lot thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen this was the last question for today I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rajesh Shrivastava for closing comments. Yeah, hey, thanks so much. Uh, really en- enjoyed this interaction. I think there were a wide variety of questions. So, uh, and, and it went through the business situation. It went through uh, the customer buying, the how we are trying to see the the way in which the world is evolving from a technology buying as well as tech perspective. All of that. and i just want to uh, let you know so first of all thanks so much for a very engaging uh, interaction uh, we continue to do what we do best which is we continue to make sure we are investing in our business to make it far more streamlined smooth and efficient close to customers and partners a business that continues to create the highest levels of experience for every single stakeholder we deal with our employees our customers our partners our vendors whoever else comes to our website to get a get a sneak uh, sneak into the products and services that we deliver uh, so our digitalization of business will continue absolutely at a very fast pace and i'm happy that somebody asked a question on why the opex is going up it will go up just because we want to make sure that we are continuing on the trajectory of implementing and investing in tech that's the way the world moves it will in, it will increase because we are implement, investing in customer outreach programs on the digital platform that's the way the world is moving and we are in a way moving ahead of the curve in some areas we will continue our portfolio expansion we will uh, continue our partnership alliances operational excellence and we will continue to recruit the best people in the business to make sure uh, we again are able to differentiate ourselves and we will continue as a company and this is, this is something which i didn't talk about it but as a company we have a very very strong uh, community conscience we do every we try and do everything from the perspective of environment from the perspective of governance holding ourselves to the highest standards of corporate governance and also from the perspective of social initiatives that we do and we got a very very strong social program which i can't talk about but you guys should visit our website and take a look at that very strong social program very strong governance and ethics and compliance all of that we want to make sure that we hold ourselves to the highest global standards on this topic so Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate the interaction and the level of details that you guys have on the questions. Any more questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. You, you can mail them to us, uh, to Deepika or to SGA Partners, and we'll be more than happy to take them on. Great, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Reddington India Limited, we conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.